All right, so uh, here we have um, it's a 1970 Rokon Trailbreaker, and uh, I've had a few people that have asked me kind of how this thing works. Um, it's two-wheel drive, which is pretty unusual for a motorcycle, and uh, so I figured I'd make a video to kind of explain um, how things work. Um, this thing is powered by a 136 cc um, two-stroke Chrysler motor. It's actually genuine Chrysler. Um, back in the day when they made small motors like this, and uh, it's uh, actually pretty simple. Um, it sounds kind of complicated, but it, it's pretty simple because um, it's designed to be worked on kind of in the field. But uh, anyway, the motor is right here, as you can see. There's a uh, centrifugal clutch which sits right here, and uh, it only spins. I don't know exactly what RPM it spins or starts spinning at, but um, you know it uh, probably around a thousand RPM or something like that starts to engage. And uh, it's belt driven, and this belt is a little bit loose. It's uh, I think it's stretched too much. So uh, I've got another belt in the house that I'm going to put down shortly. Um, but it comes back here and drives this pulley, which I don't know if you can see, but um, that actually goes back here to um, a transmission. Um, it's a three-speed um, transmission with a neutral in between each one of the gears. It's kind of weird. There's no clutch or anything to it. That's the only clutch on the bike. And uh, so anyway, this uh, clutch turns this pulley, which in turn spins that gearbox. And uh, that gearbox um, runs a chain up to this little um, sprocket up here, which is actually uh, where the drive shaft goes for the front wheel drive. I don't know if you can tell, probably can't really see, but there's actually a drive shaft which runs from this right here all the way up through the frame, and you can see there's a flexible coupling right there. And uh, that allows you to actually steer the steer the bike. And uh, it only actually transmits power when the steering's almost straight ahead. Um, it disengages as soon as you turn it below a certain um, degree. I don't actually know what that um, measurement is, but once it turns beyond a certain point, it disengages so that the front wheel can um, can spin faster than the rear, if necessary. And that drive shaft comes out through here um, and comes into this uh, this little box up here, and then there's a sprocket behind this, which comes down to the front wheel. And uh, these, this here is actually the brake. That's the only brake on the bike. Um, it's a little disc brake. It's really simple, um, but it, you know, it, it brakes, you know, the, the brakes act all the way through the drivetrain um, to the back wheel, so the majority of the braking is in the front. Um, but you do get a little bit in the back if the steering is straight ahead. So, anyway, you come around here. This is just the, uh, the other side. You've got the petcock here. Um, that's off, that's on. And then a pull start. And then there's supposed to be a kick start on this thing, but uh, it didn't come with one, so. Um, we are on the lookout for one on eBay, and um, we'll probably find one soon. We just got a order in today from Rokon uh, with a bunch of parts, but uh, they didn't sell the Kickstarter, so we couldn't get one. Um, the, as you can also see, the the gearbox transmits from, uh, but the gearbox also turns the the rear wheel here directly, so. That's just kind of like a traditional motorcycle. Um, there's actually a battery up behind there. Um, I think that's for the lights. There's no electric start or anything on these. And uh, we do have, you know, lights. I think that was an optional extra from Rokon. At least um, that's what I hear from my research. Um, it's also got this little passenger seat thing, um, which just straps on. The strap's the only thing that holds it on. Um, and you could strap things down to it. 
back there if the seat wasn't on there. Um, this ammo box is extra and uh, it's waterproof and everything. Put your tools and i uh, got spare spark plugs and a few things down in there. It's kind of handy. And uh, it's fully waterproof, so that's nice. So yeah, this is a... Uh, it's kind of an unusual bike, for sure. The, uh, the shifter is right here. And uh, you, you know, low, low, low gear. There's a really low crawling gear that doesn't take you above about 5 miles an hour. Um, that is up. You pull that back for the low gear. And then second gear will take you to kind of, I don't know, 12 or 15 miles an hour. And then you push it down for all the way for um, third gear, which is the, quote, high speed gear. But um, the bike will only do about 20 miles an hour revved all the way out. Um, so it's not a particularly fast thing, but, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. So, uh, there's, of course, a headlight up here. You can see there's um, aluminum wheels which are hollow and uh, you can fill them with water or fuel or whatever. You take this little um, cap out and you can fill them up with water or whatever. Um, when they're not full you can actually float the bike um, using the empty wheels as buoyancy basically. And uh, so that's the same with both the front and the back. And uh, this air filter, I believe it's supposed to be waterproof when, you know, the bike is off to keep water out of the carburetor. Um, the fuel cap has a vent up at the top. This, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little screw there. And you unscrew that when you're riding the bike and then screw it back down so that it doesn't leak if it's on its side or, you know, you don't want to get water or anything else in there. So. Anyway, um, that's just kind of a basic explanation of the bike. Um, I've had, you know, several people kind of wondering how I, how the thing works, and it's uh, not actually that complicated, but it's difficult to explain in words. So, figured I'd make a video.